J.V. Stalin, The Foundations of Leninism. Introduction. The foundations of Leninism is a big subject. To exhaust it, a whole volume would be required. Indeed, a whole number of volumes would be required. Naturally, therefore, my lectures cannot be an exhaustive exposition of Leninism. At best, they can only offer a concise synopsis of foundations of Leninism. Nevertheless, I consider it useful to give the synopsis in order to lay down some basic points of departure necessary for the successful study of Leninism. Expounding the foundation of Leninism still does not mean expounding the basis of Lenin's world outlook. Lenin's world outlook and the foundations of Leninism are not identical in scope. Lenin was a Marxist, and Marxism is, of course, the basis of his world outlook. But from this, it does not at all follow that the exposition of Leninism ought to begin with an exposition of the foundations of Marxism. To expound Leninism means to expound the distinctive and new in the works of Lenin, that Lenin contributed to the general treasury of Marxism, and that is naturally connected with his name. Only in this sense will I speak in my lectures of the foundations of Leninism. And so, what is Leninism? Some say that Leninism is the application of Marxism to the conditions that are particular to the situation in Russia. This definition contains a particle of truth, but not the whole truth by any means. Lenin, indeed, applied Marxism to Russian conditions and applied it in a masterly way. But if Leninism were only the application of Marxism to the conditions that are particular to Russia, it would be purely national and only a national, a purely Russian and only a Russian phenomenon. We know, however, that Leninism is not merely a Russian, but an international phenomenon ruining the whole of the international development. That is why I think this definition suffers from one-sidedness. Others say that Leninism is the revival of the revolutionary elements of Marxism of the 40s of the 19th century, as distinct from Marxism of subsequent years, when it is alleged it became moderate and non-revolutionary. If we disregard this foolish and vulgar division of teachings of Marx into two parts, revolutionary and moderate, we must admit that even this totally inadequate and unsatisfactory definition contains a particle of truth. This particle of truth is that Lenin did indeed restore the revolutionary content of Marxism, which had been suppressed by the opportunists of the Second International. Still, that is but a particle of the truth. The whole truth about Leninism is that Leninism not only restored Marxism, but also took a step forward, developing Marxism further under the new conditions of capitalism, of the class struggle, of the proletariat. What, then? In the last analysis, is Leninism. Leninism is Marxism of the era of imperialism and the proletariat revolution. To be more exact, Leninism is the theory and tactics of proletarian revolution in general, the theory and tactics of the dictatorship of the proletariat in particular. Marx and Engels pursued their activities in the pre-revolutionary period. We have the proletariat revolution in mind. When developed imperialism did not yet exist. In the period of the proletarians' preparation for revolution, in the period when the proletarian revolution was not yet an immediate practical inevitability. But Lenin, the discipline of Marx and Engels, pursued his activities in the period of development imperial. In the period of the unfolding proletariat revolution, when the proletarian revolution had already triumphed in one country, had smashed bourgeois democracy, and ushered in the era of proletarian democracy, the era of the Soviets. That is why Leninism is the further development of Marxism. It is usual to point to the exceptionally militant and exceptionally revolutionary character of Leninism. This is quite correct, but this specific feature of Leninism due to two causes. Firstly, to the fact that Leninism emerged from the proletariat revolution, the imprint of which it cannot but bear. Secondly, to the fact that it grew and became strong in classes with the opportunism of the Second International, the fight against which was and remains an essential preliminary condition for a successful fight against capitalism. It must not 
be forgotten that between Marx and Engels on one hand and Lenin on the other, there lies a whole period of an undivided domination of opportunism of the Second International. And the ruthless struggle against this opportunism could not but constitute one of the most important tasks of Leninism.